I thought that I had a lot of equipment and outdoor supplies to support all of my activities. And then I got a dog and I could not believe the amount of dog equipment and supplies that are on the market. It is insane. And given that I travel out of a Forerunner, I am only able to carry a very small amount of equipment. So today I wanted to walk you through all of my dog essentials for traveling with a high energy large dog. First up on the list is my dog crate, and this is the most expensive item that I have for Zora. I also consider it to be the best money that I have spent on my dog. Since we travel so much, it was really important to me to have her as safe as possible on the road, and the dog crate fit that bill. As much as I would love for her to be able to ride shotgun with me, it just doesn't make sense. I don't want to get into an accident and have her going through the windshield or becoming a very large danger to me and other people or herself. And it just made more sense to put her in a crate. And aside from being the safest option for when the car is in motion, the crate also gives her a place to relax and turn her brain off, which is very, very important for a dog like Zora. She loves hanging out in her crate and I leave the door open anytime that we're stopped so that she can go in and out as she pleases. And I often find her just hanging out in there sleeping. So I know that she loves it as much as I love it for her. Next up are the dog bowls that I carry. So I have three different dog bowls, a water bowl, a collapsible bowl, and a slow feeding bowl. So the water bowl that I have is actually from Gunner as well. And they sent me these to try out and I have loved them. They are so nice because water is a very hot commodity on the road and I don't have to pour it out every single time I give Zora some water like I did whenever I was giving it to her in the collapsible bowl. So I'm able to just fill it up for the day and then use the punch seal that they have to give it a good seal after I give Zora water and it's good to go and we're able to drive around and I don't have to worry about water splashing everywhere. I also have a collapsible bowl with me and this is mainly for hiking. That way I can give Zora water out on the trail. And then finally, I have a slow feeder bowl. This is for when I give her dehydrated food because she likes to eat her food as fast as she possibly can. And this helps slow her down a little bit so that she doesn't run into issues with bloat or making herself sick. One thing of note is that this slow feeder bowl is made out of silicone, so I don't have to worry about her catching her gums or injuring her mouth in any way by chewing as aggressively as she often does. In addition to having a variety of dog bowls, I also carry quite a few leashes. So the first one that I have and the shortest option is a traffic leash. It's not really as short as a traditional traffic tab, but I love having this. I find that I'm able to put it through my wrist and kind of like hook it onto me. I don't worry about Zora pulling at all. So this just gives me an easy way to hold onto that leash. This is a great leash for when we are in crowded areas. I took her to the strip, the Las Vegas strip in November, and I actually had to have this leash. I also carry a more traditional length leash. I think this one is four feet long, and this is my go-to everyday leash. It also has a handle towards the buckle that I'm able to grab onto, and I use that frequently. This is made by Kong, and I have had this since day one with her. It has been through the ringer and held up. And then finally, I have a couple of long leashes that I carry. I have a 15 foot and a 50 foot, and I think these are the two most valuable lengths for hiking. So on a 15 foot leash, if I'm in an area that allows a leash of that length, this gives me the ability to let her have a bit more freedom without going off of leash. I also have a 50 foot leash. I used to put this on her to play fetch quite a bit because it's so long that it sort of works itself out in that it doesn't get as tangled. However, it is a bit of a struggle to wind it back up all the time and keep it perfectly not free. This one doesn't come out quite as often, although I did use it a couple weeks ago when we were in a snowy area and I wanted to let her out to go plant the snowbanks, but I didn't want to put on my snow boots. So I just kind of stood on the concrete as she frolicked through all the snowbanks. It was adorable and she had a blast and I didn't have to get my feet super wet because it was just a quick pit stop and we weren't really doing any serious hiking or playing in the snow. So it worked out really well for that as well. I got the two long leashes off of Amazon and I've had those both for over a year as well and for as cheap as they are, they have been fantastic. Next up on the list is my brand new collapsible dog bed. I say brand new, but this is actually a couple months old, but it's the newest item I have for her. 
and oh my goodness, I wish I had bought this months ago. I sat on it for a long time because it is expensive, but oh, it has made my life so much better. I used to haul around a big, non-collapsible, non-portable mesh dog bed that worked great, but it wasn't easy to store in the car and I was constantly trying to work around it. So I got this collapsible dog bed from Helinox and it has been fantastic. It is so portable, it is extremely lightweight. My only criticism that I have about it is that the mesh top layer is a little bit sensitive. I say a little bit because Zora has done a fair bit of digging on it and she's put a couple nicks in it. I do try and discourage her from digging whenever I see her do it, but she's still gotten away with it and put a couple nicks in, in the mesh here and there. Also, unless we've just done a workout or she's really hot, I do keep a cover on it, whether that's just a regular house blanket, I have a bunch of fleece blankets hanging around that I'll just throw on top of it, or I do actually have a cover for it. It is an insulated, kind of like a puffy material, cover which is not durable at all i will say that i have put so many patches on it but it does work really well and it zora doesn't love laying on just the plain mesh so it does offer a little buffer but if i had to do it again i would probably buy the fleece cover rather than the insulated cover it's not going to be a bulletproof dog bed like you might be able to get for your house but for the size and the portability it's awesome I wasn't sure whether or not I wanted to talk about this next topic in this video, but I do think you guys would enjoy hearing more about it. So next on the list is Zora's food. This is the most asked question that I get next to dog training. And Zora is currently eating a mix of the Honest Kitchen dehydrated food and Steve's real food. Zora has been a raw fed dog for her entire life. I started feeding her Northwest Naturals, the dehydrated version whenever she was a little puppy and then that got very cost prohibitive very quickly as she grew. It was also really tough to find Northwest Naturals in store so I swapped her over to Steve's Real Food and I did that swap at the same time that I upgraded my fridge freezer so I had more freezer capacity to store some frozen food instead of feeding her dehydrated all the time and the frozen food is much less expensive. It is still very expensive but I do think it's worth it for her health in the long run. I probably spend, I think I calculated $480 a month on dog food for her. Now granted, she is a large dog and she's also much more active than the typical 65 pound dog. So she eats more, but it is astronomical, the amount of money that I spend on dog food. Because it is so expensive to feed her pre-made raw food, I have started adding in some dehydrated food from the Honest Kitchen, which she's really liked. However, I've noticed that she has a lot more waste and she's also much more stinky. So those are a few of the downsides, but it's still a very high quality food and she loves it. Onto Zora's second favorite topic next to food, we have treats and I swear by Happy Howie's treats. They come in a roll that you are able to cut to the size that you want. And I think that is a huge benefit to using them. They're also less expensive than buying a bag of treats. I am able to find them on Amazon. So it's really simple to just order them to a locker and go pick them up. They have them in three flavors, beef, turkey, and lamb. And I use all three of them. They are fantastic. Could not recommend them more for a high value treat. They have some great scent to them and Zora just eats them up literally. The only downside to using the Happy Howie treats is that you do have to refrigerate them once you chop them up into little cubes or however you decide to chop them up slices, I don't know. So if you're traveling like me and you don't have a fridge or you aren't in a very cold area, you might have to look at getting a different treat brand. And for non-refrigerated treats, I typically go for the Soho's or Sojo's. I'm not sure how they pronounce it, but I typically go for those, those treats. Northwest Naturals also makes some great high value treats that don't need to be refrigerated, but they are a little bit tougher to find, just like the food. And if I don't have any treats on me or I am not near a dog store, I will just put the Crazy Richard's 100% peanut butter into a Ziploc baggie, chop the corner off the bag, and just squeeze that as a high value reward for her on our training walks. Next up on the list, I have enrichment. 
This is so important because I cannot, nor should I, run Zora around all day, every day, to wear her out. Just as important as her physical exercise is her mental exercise. So I have had to get pretty creative with all of the things that I do to keep her life fulfilling from a mental aspect. So a couple of my favorite things, licky mats. I'll put pumpkin or Greek yogurt or peanut butter on a licky mat and give her that as a little extra fun thing to do during the day. I don't always do that, but a few times a week I'll give her a licky mat. I have gone through so many lick mats because inevitably they end up tearing over time because Zora likes to get every last little piece of whatever food I put on there. So they don't last forever. And I recently bought these small ones on Amazon. I did not look at the dimensions when I ordered them. And so I was a little disappointed when I opened the package, but then I decided that it was actually probably a good thing that they were smaller. Instead of putting a combo of Greek yogurt and pumpkin or peanut butter on a big lick mat, I'm able to put one of each flavor on a little lick mat and give her one or two if she's really in the mood for something to do and it's rainy or I'm not able to get outside as much as I would like to. That's something that I keep in my back pocket. I have also tested out a variety of dog chews. In the past, I have used collagen sticks and bully sticks and bully rings, but I have found my favorite chew to be a cheek roll. I order these off of Amazon and they do not smell. They are pretty affordable as far as chews go and they don't upset her stomach. And to me, that is the perfect combo of pros. And the only downside is that they do leave a slight residue but honestly, it's pretty minimal, so I don't really worry about it. And it's not permanent. I could just throw whatever item she was chewing on, uh, the blanket or my jacket <laughs> in the wash, and it would be good as new. I could talk so much more about enrichment, but I think that that will be a separate video. And this one is mainly to just give you some of the items that I use as enrichment, but I have plenty of ideas and non-cost solutions to wear Zora out, which I will talk about later. Zora's toy bin for the road is certainly very small. I have a chuck it and I have a tug. That's it. That's also all we really need. Squeaky toys, Zora likes them, but they get destroyed immediately. And they also aren't very space efficient. They just take up a lot of space and I don't have a lot of space to give. So I find that a chuck it for playing fetch and a tug for playing tug is about all we need. So that's what I carry with me. On to nail supplies. I carry a Dremel and clippers, but I almost never use the clippers. I use a Dremel because I have found it is much more precise. I don't have to worry about hitting her quick and getting blood everywhere and causing her anxiety. Admittedly, I have done extensive work with her from her puppy days to make sure that she was good about her nails, but she does not care. And the Dremel causes her no stress whatsoever. So highly, highly recommend getting a Dremel to do their nails. The Dremel is certainly slower than clippers, so if you have a lot of nail to take off, clippers might be the best way to do it. But I have found that the Dremel is a lot more dog friendly in my opinion. The dogs just don't seem to really like the snap that the clippers make whenever you are trimming their nails. Collars are next up on the list and I carry three different types of collars. I have a flat collar, a prong, and an e-collar. I know that some people might be wary of a couple of these collars, however, Give me a chance to explain some of them and you might have some different opinions. The flat collar is self-explanatory, it's just a plain collar. Although I will say that Zora almost never wears hers anymore just because I noticed that it was rubbing her hair off. And I have yet to find a leather collar that I like. I am very picky about my leather collars. So Zora just hasn't been wearing a flat collar or any collar for that matter. If we are out and about, I typically have a prong collar on Zora. This is not a replacement for good leash training. Zora is very well trained to walk in a heel next to me on a loose leash and it is extremely rare that I have to offer her any correction with a prong or even any pressure on the leash at all. She just knows what to do. She walks next to me no matter what. Mainly I have the prong there so that if she does see something that she has not seen before and she's particularly interested in it and she perhaps decides that I am no longer the most interesting thing in the world, which 
I don't know why she would decide that, but sometimes it could happen. Then I have that on her so that I don't have to pull super hard and choke her with a regular flat collar to get her attention. I'm able to just boop, 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 boop. It's more of an annoyance to her than anything. It's like somebody coming up and saying, mom, 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 mom. Because if you're using a prong correctly, it is not constant pressure. It's just light little tugs until you get their attention back. I am not yanking. I am not keeping consistent pressure on this prong. It works very well. She loves the prong. Anytime I bring out the prong collar, she knows we're going on an adventure and she gets stoked. She doesn't think of it as a negative thing whatsoever. And that also goes for her e-collar, which I have, but she hasn't worn in a very long time because it's broken. <laughs> it's been broken for like three months. And the only thing that works on it is the pager, which is just a vibration and the vibration drives Zora and a lot of dogs for that matter absolutely bonkers like they cannot stand that vibration feeling which to us it doesn't feel weird at all but they hate it so I don't put it on her um, because the stem is broken if I did use my e-collar it would be used in the same way that the prong collar is used it's kind of like an annoyance like a Hey, 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 hey. Zora works at a level five to 10 when she is wearing a working e-collar and her e-collar goes up to over a hundred, I believe. I can't even feel the e-collar until level 21-ish. It's 21 to 24 is where I typically can feel it. And Zora works at a level five to 10. I could talk forever about these collars because I think that they are very, very useful. You do have to be well-trained on how to properly utilize them, but it is a great backup plan to have because you never know what you're going to encounter. They're going to do dog things, so you better have a plan. And yelling at your dog from a football field away is not a great plan. And last on the list, I put miscellaneous because these are all the items that I cannot live without, but they also don't really have a category. So this includes my potty bags, my leash wraps or vest. I'm really bad at telling people no, they cannot pet Zora because I am a people pleaser and I want everybody to be able to enjoy Zora's cuteness, but there are just some times that she doesn't really need to be pet and it's more distracting than it is good for either of us. I also have a backpack for her and some paw wax. And that wraps up all of my dog essentials. I have tried to link everything below. If I have forgotten something or you have additional questions, please leave me a comment. I will make an additional video on enrichment and dog training and all of that good stuff. I just didn't have enough time in this one. So I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next video.